The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever tried to herd cats? You heard me right, not cattle, cats. It is a nearly impossible task. (laughs) Some animals are meant for herding, right? They're the ones who like to be together. They find strength in a group, but not cats. This past week, we have spent the entire week trying to catch two of our kittens to give them away to somebody else. And do you think we can do it? No. I've practically put on hockey gear to defend myself against these little tiny animals. And yet the second that you go for them, they go in every different direction. As fast as possible, as loud as possible, using as many claws as possible. I sometimes think that that's a really good image for ourselves in regard to God. I wonder if sometimes God looks down at us and sees a whole bunch of cats. Animals that think they can do it by themselves, thank you very much, that when you give them an order, they would rather go the opposite way. That even if it's good for them, they don't always listen. And I actually know that that's how Jesus feels about us because of that statement in the gospel lesson for today. How I long to gather God's people together under my wings as a hen gathers her chicks. And yet you were not willing. At the point in the gospel that we are for our reading today, Jesus has set his face toward Jerusalem. And in fact, he gives an expiration date for his earthly ministry. Some Pharisees who are not friends of Jesus, right? They're the ones who would rather he just went away because they threaten, he threatens everything that they know come with one last threat to hope to keep Jesus out of Jerusalem. Hey, they say, do you know that Herod is looking for you? You should probably stay away. And Jesus says, go tell that fox for me, that cunning one, that thief in the night. And even you, Pharisees, that I'm going to be out here in the country for three more days. I will cast out demons. I will preach. I will teach. I will do miracles. And then it's time for the beginning of the end. I'm headed to Jerusalem. And just in case you don't know what I'm going to do there, I'm going to die. Then he says, 
How often have I desired to gather my people together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings? And yet you were not willing. So I'm going to do it myself. It's the reason that Jesus comes, right? The reason that Jesus dies. Because we can't get it together on our own. We can't be perfect. We can't be fully holy on our own. We need Jesus. We need Jesus to do it for us. To go to the cross for our sake. So that we might be raised with him. Now maybe you're sitting there this morning going, hey, I willingly got up this morning. I have gathered together with God's people under the shadow of his wings here in worship. And you're right. But the people to whom Jesus was speaking was before the cross. We live on the other side. We live knowing the promise of the resurrection of Easter. Jesus says to them, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, and then it should finish, Hosanna in the highest. Is that familiar to you? It should be. We sing it every communion Sunday, right? Right after we bless the elements, we sing, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And we know that Jesus will show up. That he will be there with us in bread and wine. And that he comes and remains with us even on days when we do not celebrate communion, wherever two or three are gathered. I saw that a lot of you looked closely at your bulletin this morning, and I very much appreciate that. I'm going to tell our parish secretary that you read the bulletin, which both of us appreciate since we work on it very hard. But did you notice what the beginning of each service is called? It's called the gathering. That's what we do. We, God's little chicks, gather. And we believe that it is the Holy Spirit who does this work. The Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, keeps, and sends. And we're not just gathered for torture. We're not just gathered because we have to be here because mom said or grandma said. We're here to be fed and nourished. We're here to have fellowship with one another so that we can continue to believe in this impossible gospel of God's love for us no matter what. We gather so that we have the strength to be sent out again. The strength to continue in the journey, which more often than not looks like the cross than like Easter. We gather as God's people again and again and again because we have to until that time when he will gather us all as his people at the feast that never ends. Thanks be to God for our mother hen. Amen.